In this video, I want to introduce orbital hybridization. Now, up to this point, we haven't really discussed orbitals, but this is the last piece, the last part of the localized electron model. And you can probably infer why, right? The Lewis, the Lewis dot model depends on the localization of electrons. The Vesper theory that we talked about in the previous unit depends on the repulsion of electrons right we figured out from previous study from previous classes you probably know that the likely locations where electron res electrons reside are defined by orbitals so it's very tough to have any sort of in-depth conversation about electrons and by proxy bonding uh, if you're not discussing what's happening with orbitals. So what's going to happen with hybridization and with the other theories that we'll discuss in this unit is that when uh, atoms get involved in bonds and they are in a part of a molecular framework, those atomic orbitals are going to change, right? And all of these different theories are ways to describe the ways that orbitals change once you get into a molecular environment, right? Your current understanding of orbitals is probably just in the sense of atomic orbitals. You have s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, what have you. But um, but once those orbitals get into a molecular environment, they're going to have to change to adapt to the molecular environment. So I want to motivate orbital hybridization by looking at an example. And the example that I want to look at is CH4, methane. So we've looked at CH4, we've drawn its Lewis structure, and from what we learned in the previous unit, we know what its three-dimensional orientation is going to look like. CH4 is going to have um, this structure, a tetrahedral structure, where all the CH bonds are uh, separated by a bond angle of 109.5 degrees, right? This is this three-dimensional geometry that you get from knowing the Lewis structure and applying Vesper theory. So the two facts I want to point out about this structure before we discuss any orbitals in detail. It has four identical bonds. All of these CH bonds have the exact same energy. They have the same bond length and they have the same 109.5 degrees separation between adjacent CH bonds. So they're identical in every way, right? There's no difference between this CH bond and this one. They're all the same. Um, and the second thing I want to point out is that, you know, each of these are separated by 109.5 degrees, right? All these CH bonds are separated by 109.5 degrees. So, uh, so considering these two facts about the structure, let's just try to take what we know about atomic orbitals and see if we can explain this bonding, uh, this bonding pattern using just atomic orbitals. So the first thing we want to do is consider the valence configuration for carbon. So I want to consider the valence configuration for carbon. So if you remember carbon, right, is going to have four valence electrons, right? You're going to have some in the 2s and you're going to have some in the 2p, right? And for, for the sake of this argument, I'm going to actually label these 2px, 2py and 2pz, right? Each of those p orbitals are going to lie along a different axis. So I'm just denoting that we have three different 2p orbitals that are lying along different axes, right? Okay, so these are the valence orbitals for carbon. Obviously, there is a 1s, but I'm just only showing the valence configuration for carbon. So for carbon, you'll have two, uh, let me use a different color for my electrons here. So you'll have two electrons in the 2s, right? Um, and then the other two are gonna go in two separate 2p orbitals, right? Remember, um, remember the rule that we talked about in a previous course, right? If you want to uh, have the lowest energy electron configuration, you're gonna wanna maximize the number of unpaired electrons. So that's why each of these electrons is gonna go in a separate 2p orbital and not be paired up in one 2p orbital. Okay, so this is the valence uh, configuration for, uh, for carbon. Now, when we try to apply this uh, atomic orbital model directly to bonding, we run into an issue immediately with methane, right? Think about these orbitals, right? Remember the 2p orbitals, let's, let's draw a little, um, you know, diagram here let's draw a little axis here so this is the y the x and the z axis right if one of these electrons is in a 2p orbital then it's going to you know 2p p 
orbitals look like these little dumbbells, right? So this would be the 2PY. And then the 2PX would be lying along the X axis, right? So this will be 2PX. And obviously the 2S is just a sphere, spherical shape, right? 2S. So if these are the electrons that are explicitly involved in bonding and we're directly trying to use the atomic orbital model, then we would expect three different bonds in methane, right? We would expect three unique bonds. Why is that? Well, we would expect one of these hydrogens to interact with the electron that's in the 2PY orbital, right? It's lying along the y-axis. That's going to be one type of interaction. Then we'd expect one, another hydrogen atom to interact with the 2PX. That's going to be a completely different interaction. And then we'd, we would expect the other two hydrogens to be bonding with these orbitals, that these electrons that are in the 2S orbital. That's a completely different interaction. You're going to have at least three different types of bonds if you're directly using this atomic orbital model. So since this doesn't match up with reality, then we know that this is a bad way of thinking about uh, bonding in molecules, right? So this is going to be a no-go as far as, you know, applying this model directly to bonding in molecules, right? We're going to have the atomic orbitals are going to have to change in some way. This atomic orbital model is insufficient to describe the bonding in CH4. So what actually does happen? So that's where orbital hybridization comes in. What's going to happen here, right? If we think about the free orbitals in a, uh, a free carbon atom, right? So this is the same kind of diagram that I just drew, right? Except I'm or ordering it by energy, right? So the 2s is lower in energy than 2p. These would be uh, the atomic orbitals in a free carbon atom. What's going to happen is that when they get into a molecular environment, the 2s and 2p orbitals are actually going to mix, right? You're going to have a little bit of mixing here between the 2s and the 2p orbitals. So 2s and 2p will mix, right? And what they're going to form is four identical orbitals, right? So these will form four identical hybrid orbitals. Right. All hybrid orbitals are are orbitals that are a mixture of different atomic orbitals. So in the case of this hybridization, we have one S orbital that's mixing with three P orbitals. So we call these SP three hybrid orbitals. Right. So now that these orbitals have mixed, we have four identical hybrid orbitals rather than four different unique atomic orbitals, right? And notice the energy here, right? So I intentionally uh, put these orbitals halfway between the 2s and the 2p. When you mix these orbitals, the you know the, it's going to be a little bit higher than the energy of the 2s and a little bit lower than the energy of the 2p, right? So this uh, hybridization allows us to have four identical orbitals that are going to interact with uh, the different hydrogen atoms. So what's that going to look like? So let's just draw a little structure here. So I have my carbon atom uh, in the center here, and I'm going to have an sp3 orbital coming out of this side, sp3 orbital coming from there, and then two sp3 orbitals on this side. So these are all sp3 orbitals. sp3 here, sp3 here sp3 here and sp3 here right so all of these are going to interact with the hydrogen 1s orbitals right so we'll have the hydrogens that are going to be bonded here right and i'll use a different color for these 1s orbitals right there's going to be the 1s orbital in hydrogen that is interacting with the sp3 hybrid orbitals on the carbon atom, right? So this is kind of just a visual representation of the hybridization. Now we can fully explain why the bonding in CH4, why those bonds are all the same, because they're all the same type. 
there's a carbon sp3 orbital interacting with the hydrogen 1s for every single one of these bonds so now this explains the reason why we have the exact same bonds all across the board in ch4 right so now when this type of thing occurs we tend to say that the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized right so you can think about it in this way you can think about um this as you know when methane forms carbon hybridizes its orbitals in preparation of forming this bonding structure with these four hydrogen atoms right so the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized and then interacts with these 1s orbitals on hydrogen okay so this explains the hybridization in uh, methane right uh the hybridization at the carbon in methane uh obviously this will not be general enough to go to every bonding situation so we're going to have to talk about other types of hybridization schemes as well we've talked about sp3 hybridization here but there are other hybridization schemes for different uh structures and different geometries and that's what we're going to talk about in the next few lectures